Hello everybody, uh, this is Professor Fairweather from Leadership Ethics. I hope your um, philosophical and ethical experience has been going well so far and uh, hopefully challenging and rewarding. Really do hope that it's both. Um, so we are through module three, which is Kant, very tough, rigorous stuff. Um, now moving into Aristotle's virtue theory, which uh, I guess really is probably my personal favorite. I've done a good bit of work in virtue theory myself. Um, there's a lot of interesting contemporary work in psychology that really connects with some of these very ancient virtue theories from Aristotle. And actually there's a lot of Eastern virtue theories from Confucius and Mengzi as well that are interestingly really quite similar to what we see from Aristotle. But there's a lot of personality psychology or kind of character psychology that goes on in a field called social psychology now that is really looking at a scientific study of the idea of character. So in a way, this is very au courant stuff, even though we're going all the way back to Aristotle. And um, I find it very interesting. A lot of people have thought that virtue theory potentially integrates a consequentialist utilitarian element with a internal motivational element that we get in utilitarianism and Kant respectively but they of course each thinks that just that one aspect of, is the whole of moral goodness and uh, doesn't include the other element. Virtue theory seems to kind of include the intuitive and good parts of both consequentialism and deontology in one nice single integrated account of morality here based around the virtues and the vices. So um, there's a lot to say about it. Um, I've got a few resources that I'd like to send your way that just have my own personal notes on uh, some of these ethical theories and maybe a few more links from Sandel, if you remember um, a couple of those links that I sent out. So um, I will be planning to uh, send a couple resources for reading, other ways of kind of accessing some of this material. Importantly, not to replace the main readings or any of that, just so that we've got uh, some other ways of presenting and accessing some of these complex theories that can give us a different perspective on it um, and just give us a broader understanding to kind of enhance what we're getting from the core readings that are listed on the syllabus and all that. So um, I've got a few of those things. I'll just kind of collect. I need to get them in one place a little bit and send your way. Um, so just a couple uh, key comments then. Um, uh, please uh, write to me with anything that you wanted to discuss. Uh, that doesn't have to only be things about like when things are due or what they mean or what the assignment is. If you wanted to send me a theoretical question, a philosophical question about utilitarianism or any of it, more than happy to discuss kind of substance issues in any kind of email that you'd uh, want to send me. Also, of course, any questions about mechanics, of course, we can go over those as well. So, um, as a general uh, comment to the class um, on the work that we've done so far, uh, so far I think uh, things look pretty good. Uh, the one thing that I think uh, in general that I was feeling like we might do more of um, is bringing, or just kind of paying attention to, bringing as much of the theory from the books into your writing really the whole way through. Um, I mean, the more kind of saturated with the theory that we're learning all of your writing and presentation is, the better, at least for now, since we're trying to really kind of immerse ourselves in the theories. So um, I guess maybe for an example, I mean, sometimes we would have a kind of a long discussion of the kind of moral issue that arose at work. And there's no requirement that in just describing the case that you would have to include some of the theoretical elements. But I would say go for it. I think that just brings in more of it rather than less of it. 
And who knows, when you're at work and you're done with this class and you're really talking to people outside of the learning context, you might not want to include as much of the theoretical terminology or, you know, philosophical uh, complexity in everything that you would say at work to a work person. But I think here, since we're applying some of these theoretical elements and ethical issues to our work in an academic setting, I think we really want to hone in on the, the new stuff, the theoretical stuff, the stuff from the books, not to the exclusion of what you're doing at work and ethical issues that are really arising there, but really bringing those together as much as you can in the sense of really bringing out as much of the theory as you can find in all of the aspects of the discussion assignments, what you're writing. So I guess that would be as opposed to just bringing it in kind of quickly at the end, where you're maybe quickly bringing in the categorical imperative or principle of utility just at the end. Uh, and that's okay. And, you know, depending on how the prompt is written, it doesn't necessarily tell you to do otherwise. But I think just as a useful, educationally valuable exercise, it's probably more productive in really learning and being able to kind of internalize what these theories are about, that we really bring it in as much as we can throughout everything we're writing in the class, whether it's a discussion board or all of it. So just as a kind of an encouragement uh, to really bring the theory from the reading into the day-to-day -day stuff of the work environment uh, as much as we can. So I think that was just one thing that struck me uh, as a kind of a general note. And I think as we get further along in the class, we'll probably be doing more and more of that because this kind of theoretical evaluation or analysis of ethics will become more and more familiar to you and you might see your normal way of discussing things becoming more and more theoretical as the course progresses. I take it that that's really what we're wanting to do here in this class, even if once you go back out to work, you don't put it all in theoretical terms. That's not always the easiest or best way to communicate to people, but that you've mastered that theoretical aspect and you have kind of done it enough that you can later, when you're in work after the class is done, you can kind of include that level of analysis without using the terminology necessarily. That, I take it, is a good thing. We want to bring the kind of the richness uh, that the theory brings to our kind of ongoing practice and uh, life at work and, and in the world, uh, whether or not we use the terminology or not, right? But for now, uh, I say we go for the terminology and let's bring it in as much as we can. Um, and the kind of the mode of analysis, really, most, most importantly, um, okay, well, uh, also just uh, checking in and saying hi. I'm almost caught up with all of your work. You guys are doing so much work. I'm running to keep up with all of you guys. Uh, pretty close to there. I've got to get Module 3 stuff done, and then I, I should be pretty close to caught up. Um, so far, th people seem to be doing quite well. Um, please do send me an email if you've got any kind of questions. I'll be happy to respond. And again, even if it's a question of a theoretical, philosophical nature, really all the better. More than happy to uh, comment on those. And I'll be uh, resuming my activity on our discussion boards as I get through some of our other work. And uh, we'll be keeping up with you guys. So, um, all right. Well, I hope we're all doing really well. And please do send me any questions. All right. Take it easy.